bless you. Just lift your hands right now. And I want you to repeat after me. Father, I lay aside every way that so easily besets me. They're not a sin. But I recognize them as a weight. But I recognize them as a weight. That I'm carrying needless. That I'm carrying needless. So Father, I cast my cares upon you. So Father, I cast my cares upon you. Because I understand that you care for me. Because I understand that you care for me. I surrender them. I surrender them. I relinquish them. I relinquish them. And I will not pick them up again. And I will not pick them up again. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare myself free. I declare myself free. For he who the Son has set free. For he who the Son has set free. Is free indeed. Is free indeed. Now you pray that prayer right now. Just lift your hands right there. Just, just begin to tell the Lord. I will meet with you. Tell the Lord I will meet with you. 
we call it your spirit of God. Father, I pray that in the name of Jesus that you will begin to reveal yourself to your child. She is your child. She is, you are his child. You are his child.
mess around and talk to you about it, you'll bless me. You hear me? You need to get so ferocious and so adamant and so bulldog and shit this morning that it's almost, almost a fight. Because this is your best place.
that's why you have to die. She don't die. That's why you haven't gotten it for her. All the people you love and you believe in the voice of God, they don't have it. And the reason why we don't have it is because God wants to tell you himself. This word tonight is from you. Nothing but a 
first time I heard the voice of God when I was in North Carolina. My ex-wife had just left me for the second time. And I was in a two-bedroom apartment, a city by myself. And I kid you not, I heard the Spirit of God in an audible voice, just like I heard Saturday. And that Spirit said, Carlos, get up and pray. I woke up, looked around, ran downstairs to see who's in my house. Nobody was in the house. I went back to sleep. Second time, Carlos, get up and pray. I woke up, looked around in my room, ran downstairs, see who's in my house. Nobody's in that house. I said, okay, if this happened again, I'm going to get up and pray because obviously it's got to be done. But I'm just going to give God one more opportunity. I had an Eli experience, y'all forget me. Third time, he said, Carlos! And it was louder than the other two times. Get up and pray. I got up and I started praying. I don't know what happened. God didn't give me the details. But all I know is I got up and I prayed. And when I was finished praying, when I finished praying, it was an hour and a half. I prayed for about an hour and a half. When I got done, there was a peace in my spirit about whatever it was that I was praying about. Now, I'm not saying he's going to come to y'all that way. But I am going to say he is going to speak to you. Amen. Amen. However the way he speaks to you, just remember, he comes with a still small voice. And it's going to probably sound like you're leaving. You hear me? Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now.
I'm somebody that the Lord has spoke to me when you walk away. God is giving you men's ministry and your belly man. Be careful with this one. Be careful with this one. I don't know where you're at now. I don't know who's church you're going to now. I don't know who's fellowship you now.
But in order to maintain your husband's ear, you've got to remember that you are a wife who happens to be a prophetess. You hear me? If you don't ever remember anything I'm telling you tonight, remember that. You are the wife who happens to be a prophetess. So you must remain in tune with the Spirit of God at all times because your husband will come to you with some stuff. Some serious stuff. And he's going to want to hear what you think about it. But here's the deal. You can't give him what you think about it. You got to know him. You got to give him what God said about it. Every time. right now that the, the atmosphere is open and conducive to the words of the prophet. I thank you now, Father, that the, the voice of the prophet is desired. In the, there is a thirst, there is a hunger in the authority in Jesus that I declare and I decree, Father, that that which was shut down and stopped up and closed away will become open instantly. I thank you now, Father, God, that this woman of God has an audience not just with her husband, but with those that are submitted.
son of Carl Anderson. And you guys have been dealing with some things that y'all really haven't had the opportunity to talk to anybody about. Y'all just believe God. Y'all have been dealing with some numbers, some families. But y'all just believe God.
doors of refreshing in your life. That's my prayer. My prayer is God will send workers, willing workers in the house, loyal workers, obedient workers in the house, people who you can trust at a hundred percent so that you guys can carry on the work that y'all love doing. It ain't like y'all don't love doing this. Y'all love doing this. Y'all love doing this. Y'all can't see it. Y'all can't see yourself doing anything other than this. But sometimes it gets a little much. And you gotta know that people don't have, they don't consider how their actions affect you. When they're flaky and they're inconsistent and they're unreliable and they go through, but they don't consider how it affects you when you go through that process again and again and again and again with people. And I know that you all don't expect them to. So you've got to take breaks for yourself before you get to that place. Do not get to that place where confusion, the enemy has confused you and caught you to think that the ones who are for you are against you. Step back. And I'm talking to you especially because you love just like I love. And when they rip your heart out, you laying on the floor dead trying to figure out how are they okay. They already ripped your heart out. You have to learn to let go. Because those people are not losing any sleep over you. They are not. They are not. They are moving on with their lives. They are not. They may love you. They may think of you every now and then. But they are not as invested in you as you are in them. You hear me? I want you to ask God to teach you how to love from a safer place because you will never be able to love from a safe place. You love at risk at all times. You go all in. But ask him to teach you how to love from a safer place because not one person who has ever been a member of this church has any idea of how deep your love really flows for them. They have no idea. They have no idea of what you've suffered privately because you come out front. She's a phony. She'll come out front like it's all good. And you're dying on the inside because of it. No more. No more of that. No more of that. No more. Ask God to teach you to let go. Teach you to let go. You can't just continue to be strong in front of the people. So many times I see you crying. I pray for you and I don't pray for you every day. But every time I pray for you recently, you curl up in the corner crying because something's going on with somebody else who don't give a rat's my mind about what's going on with you right now. I'm not saying don't love them. I'm saying you've got to be able to let go. And you can cry a bay full of tears that is not going to change the situation. God is never going to say, Sharina, this is why. Stop asking. You hear me? I want you to stop crying sad tears over milk that is on the ground. God is sending fresh milk into this house. They will remain. Love those that have left. Continue to care. You can't turn that off. But I want the ones that are here to get a fresh you. Not a damaged you because you've been stabbed so many times by people who didn't understand your weaknesses and perhaps you didn't understand theirs. I want you to stop crying over those that have gone. Because the ones that are still here, they need a fresh you. They deserve a fresh you. You listening to me? And this is all oh, deep. I just heard it from God, and it saddens me when I see you hurting because you're my friend. See, if you were just a church chick, it wouldn't matter. I'd say what God said, go, but I'm emotionally connected to you as well as spiritually. And it affects me when you hurt. They don't know, and some of them don't care. Accept it, accept it. Stop looking at the love, stop looking at the bond, stop looking at the connection, stop looking at how great it was at one time. It's done. It's done. You've been through divorce before, treat it the same way. You don't hate your ex-husband. You're cordial, but you have zero expectation from him. He has moved on. They have moved on. You got that? You got that? Father God, I pray right now for my friends in the spirit. I pray, Lord God, that you will begin to Reestablish and reaffirm their faith in you. Father, you have their backs, God, because you see their hearts and you know that they love your people. 
Now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that you would open up doors of refreshing in your lives, in the name. Father, I pray that people will come and miraculously bestow trips and free hotel giveaways on them, Lord God, and that they would make the time to go, and that they would make themselves available to go, Lord God. And even if they don't, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you would give them opportunities just to enjoy each other and their company with one another. Father God, I pray, Lord God, that you would give them the opportunity to be refreshed in their spirit. Father, speak a word into their spirit, Lord God, that will make them excited and make them empowered and make them stand erect and stand tall and do what they do for you, God. Father, I pray, Lord God, that with all of their confidence being in you, Lord God, that you would establish in their heart that you have all of your confidence in them, Lord God, and in the abilities that you've placed in them, Lord God, to lead your people. God, they desire to do it your way. Now show them the way. They desire to tell it the way you would have them to tell it. Now give them the words to say. Father, they desire to do it with joy. Now be their strength right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray that their spirit would be strengthened. I pray that their hearts would be re renewed and repaired and revived. I pray that their minds would be delivered and set free from all of the cares and the worries of ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So let me tell you all something. Some, one of the things I've learned being a minister, because this is not my first time pastor. One of the things I learned is that ministry can be a word and a word in itself in the mind. And what I've learned to do is I've learned to stop taking on the word and putting it back on God. Remember the verse says that one planet, another waters, but it's God who gets the increase. Now, here's the deal. You gotta understand that you need a planet or your water, but you don't have the responsibility to bring the increase. And when I really, when I really understood that revelation, ministry became <laughs> Because now it's not my responsibility to do anything other than what he said. And it's their responsibility to allow God to bring in peace in their life. Now, if they don't do it, that's on them. But I've done my part. And that's the mindset you two need to have. Your responsibility is to plant it and wool. Plant it and wool. Farmer don't know. He don't care when it's supposed to grow. All he knows, if he plants it and he waters it and he does his part, it's going to happen. It's going to grow. There's going to be some growth. Y'all take that mindset. It's God's responsibility to grow, not yours. And that'll free you. That'll free your mind from all of this. It will free, that, that's what y'all need, a freedom of mind from the burden of ministry. That's what y'all need. Because it's right here in your mind, you're asking, God, why? Really? Again? We gotta go through this again? Why, God? God said, well, I'm not doing the work. I'm pruning. Let me prove it. Y'all with me? Free your mind. Somebody give God a hand praise with this man. This man I know we're supposed to do offering. We forgot your offering. We have had you already given your offering. We had you had your offering.
thank you for everyone that has decided to give or work able to. Father God, I pray that in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, that you would begin to bless them even now, God. Father, send a miraculous financial blessing right now. Based on their giving, send them 30, 60, 100 fold unto their hands right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, only Lady Singletary has asked from us to pray for her daughter, Akelia, tonight. There's no specifics, but we want to send up the word. If you will, everybody just stretch forth your hands to heaven. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for what's going on in the spirit. We ask, Lord God, that you would begin to touch your kingdom right now in the name of Jesus. Wherever she is at right now, in the name of Jesus, we declare deliverance. We declare healing. We declare breakthrough for her life right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you said, for oh, where two or three are gathered together, touching and agreeing on the thing that you would be in the midst. Father, you said, whatsoever we ask, in your name it shall be done. Father, you, you said, whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So, Father, we come petitioning, we come asking. And we're loosing deliverance, we're loosing breakthrough, we're loosing healing over the life of Acadia. And we bind up the hands of the enemy, the hands of infirmity, whatever it is, issue may be. We bind it up right now. We send forth and call forth your holy angels in the name of Jesus. To do warfare in the spirit realm on behalf of Michaelia tonight in the name of Jesus. And we declare it done. We declare it is so. In Jesus' name.
God. He make it to impact us. He make it to impact us. He make it Just right now, swiftly point your hands towards the man of God. Amen. Man is my life. Amen. Right now, we pour back into you, Lord. Lord God, we ask you to pour back into him, Lord God. Your, your man servant, Lord God. The strong man. Lord God, that is not bound by any of his own house. And Father God, we thank you for the woman of God that stands right beside him. Lord God, we speak over them right now that you will restore, rebuild. Father God, mentally, physically, socially, economically. In the name of Jesus. And in this season and in this time, Lord God, what you're doing for them, Father God, they're coming out. Full speed, Lord God. Full speed, I hear God say. Full speed ahead. He said, the reason why you're not shipwrecked because you listen to the voice. In the name of Jesus. He said, because he's, he's getting ready to send you more man from on high. In the name of Jesus. God said he's getting ready to do a new birthday. In the name of Jesus. He said he's declared a decree from the heavens. As he spoke over your lives individually, as, as he brought you together, as a family in Jesus' name, he said, restoration has come. He said, everything around you shall be consumed like fire. In the name of Jesus, I declare a decree with the family that's here with you. And those that may not be here, we declare a decree with you. That your ministry is set on high. That God has spoken a word. And for every word, word that you poured out into every man and woman of God here tonight, that it comes back to you. Quadruple, amen, overflow, no limits, in the name of Jesus. We speak this in spirit and in truth, and we walk with you by faith that God has already done. In Jesus' master's name, we pray and we declare the creator that God is the author and the finisher, and the anointing rest cool in the bottom of your life, and your family's life. We all agree by saying, amen. If all hearts and minds are clear, amen, we thank God, amen. Everybody that came out tonight. Amen. I want to stand and amen to be dismissed. Amen. I thank God for my good friend, Pastor Walk that way. Amen. I thank God for him and his wife for being walked that way. Amen. They have been a blessing to us. Amen. They have been, amen, some, some awesome people in our lives outside these four walls as well as in these four walls. Ever since they came here, man, they put their hands to the plow. They said, Pastor, what are y'all doing? Just count us in. They hear me for a time, amen, and they walk with us, amen. And they, they come, amen, and they, they call us and they treat us as their brother and sister Christ, but also they respect the God in us. Come on, somebody. Isn't it beautiful when somebody respect the God in you? Isn't it beautiful when somebody respect the God in you? And when they know that, that God is in you, and they just trying to say something that's out of character, they come back and immediately apologize, amen. Come on, somebody. And if they think something's wrong, they say, you know what? Can you please forgive me and have that? Let go. That's because the spirit of Christ is in them too. Amen. I am shocked for time. Amen. I thank God. Amen. Brother Kevin, I'm going to say this to you, man of God. God said, look forward to you, for your business to expand in some kind of way that you never thought would happen. He said, say, what you've been receiving the last week or two or the last month or so has just been the tip of the iceberg. He done already showed you some things. You know who you are in God. Ain't nobody got to do no more confirming the man of God spoke tonight. But you go with God. Whatever God tells you, you know his voice. You do what God says you. Don't pay homage to man. Because you know what God did for you in your life. When you didn't have a family. When you got a family. After you got a family. You go with God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Everybody raise their hand towards heaven. Lord, Heavenly Father, we come before you in this hour. We thank you for all three nights, Lord God. And we ask you, Father, to bless each and every one that came out each night and all the speakers, Lord God. Lord God, we ask you to bless Pastor Gilliam and his house. Lord God, we ask you to bless Pastor Secretary in his house and First Lady. Pastor Gilliam's First Lady. Father God, I ask you to bless the man of God, Pastor, and Prophetess, Lord God, and all their lay members and leaders, Father God. Walk with them as they walk in excellence to serve your kingdom. Father God, let nothing come in and create that vision. From their house, Father God, in each and every house, even in this house, as we all walk only before the throne, we praise. God, as we leave this place, give us travel mercy this time. 
And as we leave, we leave here, we need each other in love. Amen. You're not dismissed. We thank God for the musicians tonight. Amen. Brother Jason.